Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this next episode of the Planet Coaster Realism Top Tips series that we're running. Uh, so massive thank you to everybody for episode one. Blown away by the response as as usual. Uh, so thank you for liking and subscribing if you have done off the back of that. Really does mean the world. So in the last episode, we were dealing with park layout. We were looking at where you should be placing facilities. We were looking at the layout of the park and where everything should go. We were talking through some of the more realism principles and how you can detail your parks and also introducing you to all of the topics that that are going to be coming up in this series. Uh, so with that in mind, episode number two is all about paths. So I reckon we waste no more time. Let's get on with it. Let's see what we can do. All right then, so just like lesson number one, we're gonna break this into two sections. There's gonna be a section for basic and there's gonna be a section for pro. But unlike lesson number one, I'm not gonna do this as a narration-driven video. You know how I've recorded a script and then cut together some clips and, and put it all into one package. I actually wanted to be in game for this one, so I'm going to talk a bit more fluently or fluidly uh, as we go along. And for those of you that are familiar with my word salad, you'll you'll know what this is what this is all about, right? So um, you would have heard me in episode one or lesson lesson number one talking all about this idea of circulation and spoken wheel patterns and for some it's raised a couple of questions for some it's sort of bamboozled you a little bit and for some you've just like had a bit of a light bulb and we're going oh my god yes that's what I need to do so the first thing that we need to consider when we're dealing with paths is about our layout of the paths and how that fits into the park layout so when we're dealing with circulation uh, if we imagine that this building that I've got here is the boundary of the park this down here is the entrance and this would typically be some kind of ride area or themed area i mean i'm using this as a real crude example so i can demonstrate to you um when you're dealing with circulation you would typically have a path that goes around in a big circle in some capacity and it would go around some kind of central feature uh, so if you think of the likes of legoland windsor or uh, to an extent alton towers that kind of has that circular pattern you know you if you want to get down here uh, to, from one ride area to a ride area that's the top here or a ride area that's uh, at the top up here or a ride area that's down here. Uh, if I want to go from here to here, I'm going to have to go all the way around through this other area into this top area. And then if I want to get out and down to the entrance, I have to go from here down to the entrance and I have to go through this area here, which is fine if you're dealing with a park that's big enough to accommodate for that kind of space and that's what you want to promote. But if you're a particularly busy park and if you're a particularly large park, you might actually consider doing something called the spoken wheel pattern. And that's where you allow guests and every, everybody to actually travel through the center of your park like this. So you break up your, uh, your park layout into what they call the spoke and wheel. So if you imagine well, a wheel <laughs> with spokes, um, like this, and then like this. So you get the picture. You get the picture here, right? So uh, now, if I wanted, and imagine that we've got one along here as well. Uh, so if I now wanted to go from here to here, I not only have the way I would have gone in a normal circulated park around the outside, but I've also now got the ability to go through the middle. Um, and this is, the middle part here is typically where you would have your most services. This is where you would tend to find your retail shops, your games units, your food outlets, your restaurants, your possibly even your hotel. Um, and sometimes you find massive landmarks here as well. So, you know, like Disney, for example, will use, uh, we've got the castle right in the middle and they do that so that it's a landmark. If I'm, if I'm here and I want to come down here, but don't really know where to go, I head for the castle. And so I walk towards the castle in some capacity and it doesn't matter what path I've taken to get down there. I've reached the castle and then I know where to go from there. So... Spoken wheels are really good at spreading your guests, if you remember the idea of space, circulate and spread. Um, so if we've got the entrance here, if I want to get to the top here, I've got many different routes that I can go. So I can either go around the outside here, I can go up this way and then what would be this path that would be here. I could carry on up and go round, I could go up and go this way. So it's this idea of being able to spread out your guests as quickly as possible. So spoken wheels have... Um, really good advantages like that. So Thorpe Park does it really well um, in the sense that you've got tidal wave and everything in the middle. And if you want to get to anywhere else in the park, you could go via tidal wave and you, you could get there. Um, so I just wanted to bring that into this element to start with, just so that we can start talking about some of the other principles. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next thing to talk about then is going to be a destination area and how we make those work. So we already know how to get your guests there. They're going to be coming through either the circulated area or through the spoken wheel 
design uh, but what happens when you actually get to an area that's got rides and everything and the secret kind of lays in plazas so if you think back to your favorite theme parks you will notice that when you get to an area that's a designated area it's just probably a massive wide plaza or there's going to be a lot of space to walk the principle being that everywhere you could see you can probably walk on and then you've just got rides and uh, shops and everything dotted around in the middle i mean you may have some space for some kind of scenery and stuff but typically it's just one big concrete slab or one big brick slab and that's what we need to go for here in this in this realistic pattern so i've just thrown down a couple of rides in this area the coasters just from another park and these flat rides i've just dragged in randomly it's no rhyme or reason to what i'm putting in this area and this bit down here is going to be representative of a restaurant this this is going to be a games unit this is a gift shop and this is a grab and go unit so we got all of the services that we would probably expect in a zone so if I'm going to create a plaza, I need to come into the pathing tool and there's two ways that I can do this. I can do this the traditional way where I draw out a path and then I go to select grid and then I just draw my grid off the back of it and just fill in the space like so and I just carry on, carry on, carry on. And at this point, um, because we've just loosely placed down rides, don't be afraid to move rides that, that are sort of in the way. So I'm gonna, just going to move this down um, and then carry on with my grid placement along here. Like this. Fill in this as well. And this too. Uh, and I'm also, I think I'm just going to move this back ever so slightly to there now that's how you do the pathing the the, the the traditional way but there's another way that you can do it as well so if you're using a building that's the center of that plaza area and want all of your paths to be connected then you can just go back into your pathing tool select grid and then choose the building that you're wanting to build around and then it creates another uh, pathing tool now this uses the four meter paths rather than the 10 that i'm using here so this is going to take a bit more effort and a bit more time to do but the principle remains the same you just draw the area that you want to be right so uh, this is going to be a plaza area so you end up with something that looks a little bit like that now the next thing that we need to do then because this is looking very blocky and it's like this isn't very realistic we now need to make this work as an area so we need to start almost joining the dots and, and putting things together so pressing the z key on the on the keyboard i can now take the pathing tool at different uh widths and I can start to fill in the gaps in the middle. So you can see on here I've got a width of 9. It's not going to work. So if I just bring this down to 7, it still doesn't work. Uh, there we go. So I can just do that. And now I can do the same over here like this. Um, I can probably do a wider one up here. There we go. Like that. And I can also join my, my other my two plaza areas together. Uh, so again, using Z on the Z on the keyboard, I can join the, the previous plaza areas that I've made there. I can join the main path there. And then I can also bring this along here. And then if you do have anything like this like this, sometimes you can also use a smaller path. And you can fill in the gaps. So you can now see that we've just got this idea of a plaza that's starting to come together. Um, and I'm just going to do this one as well just to show you. Because I use this trick quite a lot over in Raygate Lake. Uh, there we go. So we've got this idea now of a plaza that's starting to come together. And you can fiddle around with the layouts and everything that, that you want. You can see we've still got some unsightly gaps. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, for the basic level, you can probably put some kind of scenery in here to cover it. Or you can find some foliage or something that works, you know, just to hide hide the gaps. The principle being that if you're using a plaza and you want it to be all different areas and different things, then you just need to find a smaller gap as you possibly can and fill it. So the next thing we then need to do is stop people walking through our games unit. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come into scenery and I'm going to choose the barrier here. I can sync this then using Z on the keyboard and sorry, Z on the keyboard to rotate it and then shift to move it down. Uh, I can then place the barrier where I don't want people to walk. Like so. So now I've uh, now I've done that. I uh, can stop people from walking through here. So even though this is path the game will forget that it's a, it's a path and people won't won't now walk through. So that is how you do 
plazas and don't be afraid to move things around so if i now want this grab and go unit to be elsewhere so let's say i want it at the top here and i want to bring the main path out the top well i can do that just like that so now I've got myself an almost destination area. This is everything that you'd need for a plaza. So let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so off camera, I've just done a little bit of tidying up. So you can see there's a few extra bits of path. I've not used any techniques or anything that I've not already shown you. All I've done is I've just tidied it up. I've gone ahead and I've thrown down some facilities to show you where everything would be and start to put some decoration. But please remember that this episode is not about decorating. It's about laying your paths down. So I'm not going to make this area look pretty in any way shape or form um but the next thing to talk about then is uh raising plazas so we've already put plazas on the ground right so what happens if you want to build decking or what happens if you want to build multi-level restaurants or things like that that's relatively easy to do so all i need to do is i'm just going to come into an empty space find myself a path and i'm going to bring the um width down to four meters and i'm just going to put a plaza in as you normally would right so just a quick plaza, quick plaza, quick plaza. Like that. Okay. So, uh, there's now a trick that we uh, can use. And that's by using any one of the shops and facilities. You can choose which one which one you do. It's, it doesn't have to be a specific one. Um, and you rotate it so that it's now parallel with your path. And if you then press X, which is your advanced move, um, you can then raise it up ever so slightly like so and you now get these little stairs so whereas using the path technique to get stairs you have to do the full four meters this enables you to have a, a much shallower path system so if i now place that and then place another toilet and another toilet you can see that it's now placing the stairs like this and it's now raised off the ground so all i now need to do is delete the toilets come back to my path now put the path in here, go to select, and I can start creating a plaza that's raised up like this. And this now means that uh, you've got a slight, slight gap between the bottom plaza and the top plaza that you can start putting decorations in here. So if I wanted to take myself a piece of scenery and put a topiary hedge in, for example, uh, then I can. All I need to do... This is really rough, like really rough, <laughs> but you can see that I can now place decorations in here um, and I might want this to actually be two hedges if I select those and duplicate them. So it now means that I can start creating these raised, raised areas and you can do this from multiple levels as well. So if I wanted to do this again, I can. So I'll come back, grab a toilet, raise it again. And we need it to be as close to here as we can so that it joins. Move X. Move it out. Do the same again. Delete the toilets. And then like that. And then you can create another level. So you've now got three different levels of a plaza. And you're not having to use the traditional game technique of having massive stairs so you can now do a bit more a bit more subtle so let's move on to look at the hills and how we put this onto terrain i'm going to start running out of space in this park uh, so if you're wanting to put a path up some kind of terrain then that's absolutely fine you can work with predefined terrain if you've already edited it i like to work with flat terrain and make the terrain as i go along so if you followed the raygate lake series you'll see me doing this in practice so this is how i do that so i lay down the first bit of path where i want it to be um i now take the terrain tool and i raise it slightly like remember the 20 20 degree rule um so i raise the terrain up slightly like this and I don't do it everywhere that I want the, the terrain, right? I just do it where I want the next bit of path to be. Because I then take the path, and then I come to advanced settings and make sure that flatten terrain is on and keep this ticked. And now I press control on the keyboard, and this now lets, lets me do two nodes. So I've now got separate ones, otherwise it's trying to, trying to merge, right, you see? So press control, and I place my next bit of path. Now, if I take my hand off control, you can see that the, the 
pathing tool is now trying to join and where you get this clipping where the terrain is coming through it's recommending that it raises or lowers the terrain in that aspect so if I now place the path there you can see that it's auto adjusted the terrain around the actual path and I've now got two levels so I can do this again if I want to go up a hill so the episode that I did uh, for uh, Hills and Thrills I think the episode is called uh, where I do the the Hershey Park style bit in Raygate Lake this is exactly what I did I just did it in stages and then if I go control again and move this down this way and it will do the same and now you can see that you're starting uh, you're starting to get this idea of, of a hill. Now it's not fluid, right? So there's this flat, this awkward flat bit here, and there's this awkward flat bit down here. So sometimes what you need to do is delete the middle node, and hope that the pathing tool is going to be intelligent enough to do the bit in the middle there. So I know that this is a you wouldn't have this sort of right angle here. This would be a bit more fluid, but it gives you that 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 idea, right? That the pathing tool has worked out that it needs to join this bottom node with this top node and it's now made it more fluid in the middle um, and so you just con continue to repeat that process until you're up your hill but remember that uh, you're going to need to get your guests and everything up here so if you've got disabled guests you're going to need ramps or if it's a particularly steep hill you're going to need to deal with uh, transport rides to get people to the top you might want to put stairs in but if you put stairs in make sure you've got ramps and, and that sort of thing so that's how you deal with uh, that's how you deal with terrain anyway so I think next we should move on to queues so another popular question that I get asked all the time is around how I decide queue lines and how they're going to be. And the, the honest answer is there is no right or wrong answer. And I say this a lot throughout all of my tips videos. There's no right or wrong answer. It's about how it feels in the area. So, for example, in this, I've already laid out where I want the rides and I've already laid out where I want paths. So now I just need to do the queues. So the only big advice that I've got for people is to reduce your queue size down to two meters. So when you've got a real life park they're going to want to squeeze as much of a queue line in as small a space as possible and you see it all the time where people still use the three and four meter uh, queues and that's absolutely fine if you've got a need for it um but i always tend to move mine down to, to two meters because it, it's a bit more realistic that way so all i do now is i just assess the area so i can make a feature of this lift hill um and i can bring it up and line it up somewhere with uh, this plaza area so i know that i'm working in this in this sort of space when the mouse is not playing around so all I do is I connect my queue and I say well I'm going to bring it out this way and now I just need to, to, to decide what I do with the actual queue line so I can either do cattle pen where it literally goes to and from um, or I can do what they call an out and back which is essentially it's a queue that goes out this way like so and then it might come out this way and then I go to select grid again and come out this way and it just goes back like this and then deselect grid and I select it again and now just do another side this way like this deselect and then I just join up the middle so that's what we call an out and back um, you can also do cattle pens so if I just remove this one here I can create a cattle pen like this um, and then because of the way that this is configured, I need to get rid of this one too, put a, a straight one in there, and then like that. So that's, and that one is an out and, ben, uh, out and back cattle pen. <laughs> so all I now need to do is just fill in this, this space here. Now, uh, w where possible, I try and not keep it to the same grid, uh, because unless you're using a an, a, an actual cattle pen, you know, like... Uh, Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, for example, that is just one massive cattle pen, and that cattle pen's entire, and it's on the same grid if you were to put it into Planet Coaster. Um, but I tend to like to bring it round and just bring them off different grids, just because it creates a bit of variation. I mean, it's not it's it's not integral, it's not required that you do that, um, but I just like to do that badly, as you can see. <laughs> um, and then just do something like that. Um, and join it up so you can sort of vary your very cues and that's one way of one way of doing it the other one that i like to do is make the queue line flush to the actual ride itself so again i'm going to use the the two meter method here but what you'll notice is if you just do it straight from here you've got this awkward gap that you now have to fill um 
and you have to find a way of filling it and it just looks weird. So what I do here, I just get rid of these. I press control again to give myself control over where this node is going to be and it no longer tries to connect to the entrance, right? So uh, I just place this one close by. Uh, I need to come in and turn flattened terrain off. Um, and then place the next segment. Actually, I think I've placed that too far. Let me just try again. There we go. And then place the next segment that way. That way. And now I can bring this round the the actual ride itself. So this is now hugging the outside of the ride. Um, and now I can, I can make a decision. I can either join the queue up to this path here. Or... I can grab the grid and take it back. And I just go back this way. Like this. And then when you are ready, however you want to, just join it to your path. This is going to be a bit of an awkward join, I think, because of the way that it's here. So if I press... Z, you can see that it's not it's not really liking it and that's only because we've got the end of the plaza here so for this demonstration i'm just going to awkwardly join it to the plaza um and now now you can see that i can join this queue to this uh ride and it's not trying to jut out and it's not trying to use the three meter method by standard so i've now got this control and uh if i'd have moved this ride a little bit further i can make this queue line flush to this to this path so the next thing then is using a very similar method to that is dealing with the roller coaster. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my path again and I'm going to take the queue line. I'm going to make sure that it's at two degrees, uh, sorry, two meters. And I'm going to press control and shift. And then I'm going to line up my path with the station like this to make sure that it's at the correct level like that. And then I'm going to place my path. And now I want to line it up with there we go the actual station edge and now i just continue it and i bring it down like so um, and now this will run nicely alongside uh, alongside the actual station if you're wanting to go one more extreme what you can do is the same method so you go this is really fiddly to do uh, so you go control and shift and you raise it up like so so it's now the right height and I come to the corner and I place it and then I make it aligned to the station side and now I can select grid and place it along the station side so it's now flush to the station but if I've placed it right I can then move it down the side of the station and bring the, the queue down here so you can see I've just I've just missed it so it is really quite fiddly let's try again so control, shift, raise. Forgive me, by the way, I don't know what the controls would be for console. You can still do all of these techniques, but I'm sorry, I don't know what the, the controls would be. Um, so I'm going to move to here. I'm going to make it flush with the station. Bring it out. There we go. Like that. I mean, it's not as flush as it was before. It, like I say, it's really fiddly. You have to you have to play with it. But what this now means is that I can bring the queue down this way, and I've got a bit more space, a bit more space to play with. And now, if I so wished, I can just come in here and cattle pen away. And the the length of the queue that you're using should be based on the capacity of the ride that you're actually going for so and also the capacity of your park so if you're dealing with a park that's particularly large and you would expect there to be a roller coaster in park if the roller coaster has got a capacity of around a thousand to a thousand two hundred people you want to allow worth a three hour a three hours worth of queue if you were making this real life so we know that that's not really playable in game but that's that's the kind of principle that you're going to need so this for example uh, this queue kind of set up in a real life park would probably hold about 30 to 40 minutes worth of people um so if i wanted it to be an hour i'd need to double this cattle pen out even further and if i wanted it to be 
two hours, I'd need to make this four times the size. Um, there is no rule, there is no formula that I can provide to you for that. You just sort of have to go by eye and by the capacity of the park. So if you're only building a small park and you only get five, 6,000 people in park, you don't need to do massive, massive, massive queues for it to feel realistic. Um, you just need to do a, a queue like this. But if you're dealing with a park the size of Alton Towers or the size of Six Flags or the size of Disney, you're going to need to accommodate massive, massive queues for that. All right, so the last thing to really show you on this is just about how you're going to tidy up your plaza area. So I need to hammer this point home. This is not an episode on how you make your plaza area look pretty. This is about how we're laying down the paths in a realistic manner. Uh, but there are a few things that you can do, even at the basic level, to hide these unsightly gaps that we've got. So we already know that the plaza is as good as we're going to get, right? We've tried to fill in these gaps and it's just red. And even where it does turn white, it's still not going to let you place it because we've just done as much as we as much as we possibly can. So we are going to be left with these uns unsightly things. And you may have taken the decision to use two different plazas and join them together. So for example, you may have done this where you've got one layer of plaza this way, like this. And then you've chosen to go this way with a plaza like this and you've then found some kind of creative way to join them all together right so like that um so you may you may have done that and you're left with a few unsightly gaps but for this for this one we've got a we've got a couple that we can use so for these smaller ones uh, you can just go into your nature and find a tree where the trunk is about as wide as the gap. Now, don't worry about this not feeling real. There is a precedent in real life. So I've gone around a couple of theme parks and I've looked and there are genuinely trees that just stick out of concrete. Um, this does this does happen. Parks do do that. So uh, you can just take the tree and physically shove it into the hole if that's what you want to do but if you do want to feel better about it then you do have some stuff in the planters so if you're wanting to put down an actual planter for it to sit in then you could you could just grab it put the planter down and it's fine um, or you can use the the bigger planters so in Raygate Lake I do this quite a lot where I just take two like this and I put them together whoops I probably just place it there <laughs> uh, and then take it like that group it together and then I can move it as one and place it like that right so if that makes you feel better about having the tree just sticking out of the concrete then that's that's what you can do but we're still going to be left with these big areas like this so we've, we're going to be left with these areas that still need to be filled in so uh, if I take the the rough brick one here I'm going to need uh, something that's narrow enough for this gap because if I use the four meter one here I'm going to be losing way too much plaza right and it's going to look out of place and it's going to look silly so i'm going to take the station surround so any of the brick sets that have got the station surround that goes along the bottom this will work uh, and i'm going to put it into the ground so that i'm only sticking out half and then i'm going to change the grid size so it's a lot smaller so i'm going to do it to one meter and i've got much more control over where this goes now uh, so i'm just going to place it over there and then i'm going to take the four meter and bring this back up to path level and just color in and join the two uh, and then when i click on done i've now got full control over where this goes so i can rotate it i can shift up and down and i can just place it so that it's now hiding that unsightly gap what i now need to do is just find a way of filling in this top so the pro tip for this is to use something from the theme makers toolkit you know like the mulch that you've seen me use in raygate lake uh, so it's here mulch um, and it's just acting like dirt. Um, if you're using four by four rather than two by four, or, yeah, two by four, then you could just go ahead and use the planter, uh, the planter ones. So you could just use that if you wanted, uh, or you could use that as the end. So I mean, that it's it's up to you. I tend to like to do this because you get a bit more creative control. You can change out the brick styles, and you can put whatever you want here. It could be concrete, it could be stone, it could be brick, it could be this rough brick, it could be smooth concrete, whatever. I tend to like to do it this way. Uh, and then you just need to find a way of filling in flowers. So I'm not going to take any care or effort into what flowers or palette or colours I'm choosing or how they're positioned, but it works just as 
just fine like this uh, and then if I wanted to be proper lazy I could just do that um, and you can see now you've got a, an effective flower bed don't forget to layer it up with a tree if you want to or a different tree just to give it a bit of variation if that's what if that's what you wanted to do um, and now you just repeat that process so if I take this and I paste it there. And if I take this and paste it there. I mean, you get the picture, right? Obviously, you're going to swap these out. You'll find different things to put in places. But you start to get the idea of how you're going to fill in, fill in those gaps. Now, I've got one last tip to show you before we move on to Pro. But let's, when we pick this up, let's have a look at the Pro version of what we do with this bit next, right? Okay, secret sneaky trick time. You can trick the game into giving you two meter wide normal paths, which we know the minimum is four. So two meters. What? Okay, so this is how you do it. This is really fiddly. I don't recommend you do it uh, too often because the hitboxes on groups is wider than a two meters in a normal path. Uh, it, the game doesn't like it if it's in a busy area, but this is how you do it anyway if, if you do decide you want to do it. So uh, you can take one normal four meter four meter path like this control and do another row and now you can take your Q at two meters place it off one here your Q at two meters place off one here and now go back to normal path <gasps> and it will try and join it in the middle so if I wanted to then do a bend I can do that so I just take that one, Q there, Q there, take the path, join it, join it. And then to get rid of everything else, you just delete the path either side. So if, you, if you're wanting to do some kind of like garden area where uh, you want really small pathways, then you can do that. And it's now a normal queue. But you can see that it's not going to let you continue to edit the pathway using two meters. It will try and change it and convert it to a four meter wherever possible. Um, so you do need to follow that kind of technique for the length of the path that you want to do. But it's a really cool technique. Like I say, if you've got a really quiet area or if you've got a small, uh, a small like garden area, you can also upgrade your path as well. So if you wanted it to be the natural paths, then you can do that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you can't do any kind of grid with it because it doesn't recognize it as a grid, right? So you've, we've tricked the game into doing something that it shouldn't do. But it's a nice little trick anyway, uh, just as a, as a bonus one. So that's pretty much everything that you're going to need for the basic level. So remember, this isn't an episode about decorating an area. This isn't an episode about making it look pretty. Uh, this is an episode on laying your paths and how to put those down. But there are a few pro tips to go through. So let's swap over to pro. I mean that's a pretty decent secret sneaky tip, right? It's cool if you want to do a want to do a garden. So let's move on to the pro tips for the plaza, and there aren't many pro tips for this one uh, because it falls mainly down to decoration and how you what you place in a plaza rather than how you lay down paths. But there's a couple of things that I do want to show you. So we're back to where we were. I've still kept all of the trees and everything in here, uh, but I'm going to come up to the come up to the top. So you guys will already know if you've been watching the Raygate Lake series that I don't like to use the in-game queue fences. Uh, I like to custom fence all of my queues because you get much more control over the look and feel you can swap out the queues uh, fences you can put the don't die fencing all along here you can change the fence styles halfway through you're not tied to having one specific fence type inside a queue but what that does do is it leaves you with extra gaps to fill um, and you'll also go into have areas where as you already know we can't fill it in as much as we even try the game is just not going to let you. Um, and no amount of trying to do any kind of small cosmetic cover-up is going to help you with that. Like, for example, here, you may say that uh, I want to have a wall that's along here. So I'm just going to build that in really, really crudely, really roughly. There we go. So we can't, no matter how much we try... There's nothing we can do to bring a path in along here. And that 
sort of bothersome. And when it comes to realism, it can sometimes really take it out, take out that element of realism. And there's things you could do if you wanted to play with the plaza, join it together in different ways, like if you've got the patience to do it. Or you could just kind of admit defeat and say, actually, what can I do? Well, the answer is path cover. So where you've got something like this that we just physically can't do it and something like this where uh, we still just can't lay it down. Um, I like to use the flat roofs. So on the, on the flat roofs, you've got this, this absolute awesome palette of stuff that you can use. Now, you'll see me using in Raygate Lake the, uh, the Theme Makers Toolkit Concrete Slab, right? It's brilliant. Whoever loaded it to the, to the workshop is an absolute genius. Um, so I'm just going to turn a line to surface off. And all I do is I use shift just to sink it into the ground um, like this. And then I'll always use the advanced placement. So moving it across, moving it across, moving it across like this. Um, and then I group it so it's easier to edit. And then I just highlight it and I move it around. I'm just going to sink that back into the ground like so. Um, and then I just duplicate it. So control X on the keyboard, duplicate it. And then I can highlight this bit, control X, duplicate, duplicate. Now what, what you're eventually doing is you're hiding all of this unsightly stuff that you just can't otherwise hide. Um, now this also applies to, there we go, your queue lines as well. So you'll see if I just line it up to there. And now come up to here and do this to here as well and this to here. So you can see the difference that it that it really makes. So at the moment we've got this unsightly gap in the middle, but when you actually add everything in, you know, like the uh, these flat roofs and the car path covers, that's what they're called, path covers, uh, in, it really does come to life. So suddenly, all of that unsightly stuff that you had before that you couldn't hide, you've now managed to hide. And you've now managed to force the game or trick the game into thinking that it's now a wide open plaza. And you just continue that through. Um, and I've zoomed out too far, actually, so you can see that the path... And you see this in Raygate Lake, actually. Raygate Lake. Uh, if I zoom out far enough, you can see the path underneath it. Now, all you do in that instance is you just raise it up ever so slightly more. Um, and there you go. So you can now see that you've created a plaza without having a plaza. Um, but underneath it is still the path. So the guests will still walk where you intended, but you now can't see all of those unsightly stuff underneath it. So if I do this, it literally, you hide it all. And now just where you place your queues and everything, you're not your queues, sorry, your fences around your rides, you've now got control over how your rides are, uh, fences are placed. So if I wanted to have a square edge along here rather than being forced to use round, I can do that. Um, all I do is I just control X again. And I grab a fence or two. Actually, I'm going to grab these fences because they are here. Like this and place it against there and so and suddenly you've now got the ability to have a square pad rather than the circle pad that the game wants you to have so you've now got control and if i didn't want this to be round and i wanted it to be a, a, a hard square i can do that too and you've seen me do this with the rise in raygate lake um where i've sort of forced the game to ignore the fact that it's round so i can just do Actually, let's just go here, like that. So I could do that, and that's my that's now my my boundary of my ride, and I can just put the queue around it. Um, so you've got you've got that full that full control, and you can use the flat roofs for all sorts of stuff. Um, so you've got some brilliant like patterns that you can use. You've got this one that's a bit more from the spooky pack that gives you a bit more slab feeling like that uh you could create i'm trying to find ones that aren't tmtk so that everyone can try this uh if you wanting to have some kind of decking then you could use the modern wood 
all works the same way. Um, let me show you that in practice. There you go. So if you wanted to have decking, then you could do that. Uh, or you could have brick. So in the uh, vintage pack, you've got brick that you could use. Works the same way. Be careful if you're going to use something that's got a pattern to it, though. Uh, because if you come to a corner of a plaza like this, you, uh, you end up not being able to line up the brickwork. So you have to sort of do the next tip that I'm going to show you in those aspects if you're using using these. Um, I like to use the rough concrete one because it gives that sort of like really cheap poured concrete feel. But again, it just it's just a an awesome way of just hiding all of that stuff that you've got that's unsightly. Like that, and it just hides all hides all of those gaps and just creates a a massive, massive plaza. So, I reckon now is a good time to talk about what we do as a pro tip if we are using patterned flat roofs. All right, so this is your final pro tip for the plaza area. And like I say, and I've said this all through the episode, we're not making this look pretty. We're not talking decoration. We're just talking about how we can make really ultra realistic plazas right so we've got this situation then where we've chosen that we want to use the brick work and it looks awesome as a plaza it's covered everything that i want i'm ready to decorate it in the way that i want but i can't line these up because it's on a grid yeah so that's fine because i could just take it off the grid and move it round. but oh no now i've got this really awkward what's going on here i can't line the lines up i can't do what i want to do with it and it's now going to look a bit poor so it's okay all is not lost either swap to a a neutral um flat roof so like the uh concrete one or the tmtk concrete that works brilliantly but if you are adamant you want to use brick totally fine all you need to do come into the, and this is if you've got the ghostbuster pack uh, that I'm going to use but you can also use other walls that are available in other packs so if you are playing on console you can still do this method you're not you're not locked out of doing this uh, but I like to use the firehouse windowsill um, so firehouse windowsill uh, no actually I'll type window sill there we go it worked eventually. <laughs> so uh, I take the I take the windowsill and it gives a really good border, right? So it gives you this awesome way of, of doing a border. And you've got two sizes, so it's fairly vers versatile. So change the color if you need to. Um, change it to a gray. Sink it down to an appropriate height. And then just line your plaza like this. And then... And I'm doing this really roughly, by the way. I would normally use the... Uh, the advanced move to make sure that it's all on the right axis and everything but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes so you can see it so like this like this like this and of course vary the height of this depending on whether you want it to be like a, a wall or whether you want it to be a curb completely up to you um, it works this method is what, what I'm showing you now is going to work both ways so I'm going to actually make this more of a curb then you take your brick and now you overshoot it so you go too far um which is fine you know that's that's fine so now what you've got is the bricks are now lining up quite nicely with the curb um but you've overshot the curb but in terms of the grab and go unit it's now nice and flush there's no unsightly gaps there's nothing it's the brick goes right up to the building so we now just need a strategy for here so this is where you can either use the um, the mud, the dirt that comes with the normal game if you've got the space to do it. Or, this is where Hydro's Mulch comes into it. Uh, probably a park saver for me. I can't, you know, I can't spread this enough. Uh, and all you do is you take the mulch and you just place it down. Now, because you've used a thick wall, 
it, you don't have to line it up perfectly. Like you know, this whole idea of color between the lines, uh, you don't you don't have to. Just as long as you don't overshoot it, then it's absolutely fine. And then of course you've got different sizes, so you vary it up so that it actually looks like a flower bed, like this, like this. And so what you've now done is you've created some kind of a way of hiding this awful unsightly line, right? Um, and now all I need to do is using the, the terrain technique where I was saying that flat terrain is not flat. Oops, that's probably too much though. Um, just vary your terrain slightly so that you're now creating a bit of a softer border between your uh, path, your mulch and your terrain. And then from there... All you then need to do is just find a way of decorating the outside. So let's just take a tree or two. You might take a few flowers. And then you just all you're doing there is you're, you're just blurring the lines now between where the mulch is and where your landscape is. Um, and then what you've done is you've, you've now created the perfect outline for your plaza. So you can see now that we've joined up the queue. We've got no unsightly lines here with the queue line. It's now one plaza area uh, we've got no unsightly lines for the grab and go unit here uh, and we've also managed to find a way of putting the curve back in so we're now we've now created this awesome looking area so if i just repeat the same thing down here so i can show you uh, again so we're going to go back to the windowsill and this time i'm going to use the bigger one uh, it's going to be a curb again and i'm going to purposely overshoot this path like that. Uh, I'm going to take the vintage brick and overshoot it again. I'm going to go back, take the mulch and put the mulch in. In fact, you know, I'm just going to use the bigger one just for time saving. Like this. And then I'm just going to take terrain editor and hide the rest. Oh, missed a bit. Oh, it's because of the queue. Okay. Um, come back into my nature. Put a tree in. I'm going to need to find some way of hiding this. So let's just... For now, put something like that in. You'd you'd find a more creative a creative way of doing it, right? You you sort of get the you get the idea, and then just find a way of blending the lines and blurring the lines between uh, grass, mulch, and pavement. And there you go. Your plaza is now smooth and curvy. Um, and if I now just take this, whoops, even further. Like that. And there you go. Big plaza. Big, big, big plaza. And the last tip that I'm going to give you for the pro side is make sure that with this firehouse roof technique that we've been using, also do this on your queues that don't back onto another path. So this is a bad example, this part here, because I've, I've overshot it purposely for demonstration purposes. But here, you want to give each of these are custom curbing like so just to just to line it off now there's a couple of reasons that you do this the first is because it, it it adds that element of realism it gives that idea that they've put down some kind of retaining curb to hold all of the concrete into place anyway um but it also gives you that ability to then continue the mulch coloring in as i like to call it uh, so if I go back to mulch, I've now got the idea of being able to being able to colour in like this. Uh, so I don't have to have a completely f uh, solid line. I don't have to have it completely lined up. I can just go along, and it just gives me a little bit of a margin of error uh, just to do what I want there in terms of de decoration. Um, and then the final thing to show you is what happens if you want to put this inside a building, which is 
fine. So it's we've we've talked about how we do it for a garden, but what happens if we're doing the same principle with a building down here? Like, how do I get this to how do I get this to, to, to be smooth, to be lined up? Well, that's relatively simple, but it's not an elegant solution. <laughs> so let me take another flat roof. And let's take the wood, for example. So all I do here is I, I put the direction of the of the wood. Um, and again, this could be anything. This could be from the theme makers toolkit flooring or, or whatever. Um, and you sink it down, but you sink it down to be above the brick. Now you sort of have to squint a little bit because the guest's foot is going to start clipping through. Um, so it depends on your tolerance level of, of clipping as to whether whether you're okay with that doing that. Um, and then once you place it, you just move it back so it's no longer clipping through the clipping through the wall. And then all you need to do is find a way of, of making this join um, a bit more natural. So what I used to do in Raygate Lake is take the wall sign. The theme sign, which is this, uh, the strip, which has got the um, the nobles on it, the steel strip with the nobles. I don't, I don't know what the, I'm not an engineer, am I? I don't know what I'm talking about. Colour them both grey. And then use the advanced move tool. Grip, grip, slip, slip, grip, slip. Let's call it grip, slip. Let's make, let's make up words. Uh, and then just place it down. That way, this is a really rough, inelegant way of doing it. Obviously, you're going to take way more care about it than I have here. Um, this would line up perfectly and everything. But now, now you've got this transition between brick and wood. And it doesn't feel so awkward. It doesn't feel so stark. But your brick now lines up with the edge of the, uh, with the, edge of the building. And if we now just continue this plaza one last time... And let's take it to the out to the extreme. There we go. And now you have one brick plaza that looks relatively decent. So like I say, this is more about placing the paths down than it is about making it pretty. We'll go over the go over the decors. But guys, that is the top tips that I've got for plaza placement. If I've missed anything, I I'm very sorry. Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, if if you've even found this even remotely useful, <laughs> is it too long? Is it too short? Is it not enough detail? Is it too much detail? I'm kind of hoping that you guys are going to guide me on this because I could talk forever, right? I could I could do this forever, but you know that I word salad my way through everything. But I'd like to know if this is the right level of detail or if you need more, if you need less, if it's too long didn't watch etc but anyway thank you so much for coming along if you do like it and you want to know when the next one comes out you know what to do leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel um, and i will see you for the next one until we speak again please keep safe bye bye